Hey everyone, welcome. Um, just to let you know, we'll get started soon. Um, Elliot will be here as soon as she's just wrapping something up. Um, and we'll just wait for the room to fill up. Um, I'm kind of hoping not everyone tries to attend tonight because we have about 180 people signed up and the room can take about 80. So uh, this could get fun. Um, so thanks for joining early. You've been able to guarantee your seat in what should be uh, a fairly busy event. I'm going to stop interrupting all your awesome conversations. I can see people have gotten used to the emotes already. Um, so do uh, play around with those and, uh, and, and have fun. Um, but yeah, just let you know we'll get started soon. Thanks all for attending. And, uh, and yeah, I'll come back to you with, with the uh, event set up in a sec. Hey Elliot, you're here. How uh, how are you? Can can you hear me? Okay. Oh, I am. I I am here. I am very well. Thank you. Everyone else can hear you too. Um, I just realised I was like, who's this random person on stage? But I keep forgetting <laughs> that you shaved your head. So I was like, who's yeah. this bald person that's here? Yeah, exactly. I've got these purple lips as well. Matches the uh, combination. <laughs> Love it. It's always fascinating to see whether people dress as themselves or if they dress completely differently. It's uh, quite telling. We should unpack that one day psychologically. Mm. Yeah, I'm, 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 it's giving me some inspiration, actually. I'm expecting to see you in pink jeans on a regular occasion now. <laughs> Okay, so we'll let the room fill up a little bit more and, um, and then we'll get started properly. Um, but welcome. I mean, uh, I'm absolutely loving this new, this new world that we are in. I don't know whether everyone else, we've already spoken about this world, but uh, I'm staying. <laughs> There's uh, a whole lot of space to plant virtual trees in the metaverse, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I know we've kind of already talked about whether the, uh, the virtual fire is ethical or not, or compatible with the climate, but I'm pretty happy for it to be burning away uh, virtually. We're not burning any uh, any real coal. We're just burning virtual, highly sustainable logs behind us. So uh, do not worry about the virtual atmosphere. The air is very clear here and the trees are nice. very well protected. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so just a few more minutes while uh, while the room fills up. I guess I'll get started with the hellos and uh, the thank yous and the welcomes to everybody while uh, while it does. Um, so yeah, first and foremost, hello and, and welcome. Welcome to Think Different. Um, Think Different is, as uh, as you'll know if you've been before, um, an event where we have great conversations with founders and creators about their journeys so far, and the successes, the struggles, and everything in between, trying to be just as honest as possible, um, a little bit more brutally honest than you might otherwise find at 
other startup events which might just tell you all of the glory uh, and none of the guts of, of the story. So um, welcome. Uh, thank you for being super on time for uh, our highest um, attended or highest signed up event tonight, virtual events during the nearing the end of lockdown in the UK at the very least, because I know we have some international attendees tonight, uh, Malta, hey Kristen being one, and uh, of course Ravi who's in India. Um, but yeah, running a virtual event nearing the end of a lockdown is, is a tough one because people start to rediscover beer um, and the sun uh, and barbecues and of course uh, are missing out on a massively in interesting talk from, uh, from Elliot tonight. But, um, but hopefully we still end up with a, a bunch of people. Slightly was worried that we'd get everybody turning up about 180 signups and only 80 seats so we may end up for end up with a, a bit of a scrabble if everybody gets past the character creation screen and, uh, and is able to attend but welcome um i'm going to run you through some instructions in a second about how to use the platform if it is your first time so let me get to that what you'll have noticed so far is um, that if you're on desktop or your mobile, you'll see a bunch of little notifications on the screen. I'm sure you're all digital, digitally savvy. You're here, that says a lot already, um, but they should just do what the buttons say. Um, the room, we'll tell you a bit about the room. The chat allows you to chat with everybody in the room. You can see people talking there. Hey Sam, hey Ross, hey Bryony. Thanks Giles for telling me about uh, sending emails on the big screen. Um, you know, GDPR is very important to me. Um, and uh, and you'll also have noticed, as I can see a lot of you doing already, the emotes. The emotes are one of the most fun parts of this platform here. You can kind of react to the conversation as we go. Nothing worse than just being sat in a room where, you know, people are just sat looking one way um, and not engaging in the conversation. We'll get to questions at the end. Um, but if there's something you find funny, something you love, something you like to applaud, then you can react in those appropriate ways as we're having a conversation. Um, the tables, the tables are color coded, hopefully, as you can see. Um, the audio is surrounded to your table alone. If your audio isn't on push to talk yet via your settings, please do set it that way um, now. Otherwise, you might end up just making dinner in the background of the talk and everybody else is trying to listen. Um, if you do want to go and jump on the table on your own, you can. There are a couple more remaining at the moment, um, but other people should be joining you fairly soon. You can highlight people's heads, see what their names are, and potentially even click them and engage with them on social media if they've added their Twitter or LinkedIn bios, for example. Um, you should be able to connect with them. And now that you're in this room key event, you should be able to attend other room key events as well um, on the schedule that you'll see on the main screen. So that's uh, the instructions for now. Um, let me skip to the next bit, which is thanking our partner. So we have a whole suite of amazing partners who power everything we do, um, all of our events and, uh, and everything, as you'll see on the emails that we send before and after the events, thanking you for coming and asking you to attend the next one. Um, but of course, we also have our headline partners who power some of our events specifically. In this case, we have Freshworks for Startups, who, um, if you don't know, are a massive company um, based in India, powering uh, startups all over the globe, uh, some famous uh, companies that I'm sure you'll recognize, who have been kind enough to provide the different community with $10,000 in credits across their platforms um, to help you supercharge your company. Um, but I'm probably doing it a massive injustice, so I'm going to leave that to Ravi to tell us a little bit more. Uh, thank you, Ravi, for joining us. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks, Ash. Uh, we're super happy to be partnering with Different on this initiative. It's my second room key event. Uh, so much fun. Can't wait to uh, you know network with all of you later. I lead Star Partnerships at Freshworks. Uh, we're a sales and support software company with over 250,000 customers globally using our products. Uh, we have a CRM software, a help desk, and a chat software that will help startup like you can engage with your customers effectively. Uh, as part of this event, what we're trying to do is that we're providing the attendees with $10,000 worth of uh, credits for a suite of products uh, that will help your startups build create engagement with your customers and if you are any vcs or uh, investors participating in this event do reach out uh, if you'd like to extend this benefit to your portfolio startups i'll be hanging around after the event so feel free to say hi uh, have a good event everyone all the best uh, ash over to you 
Thanks so much, Ravi. Um, and thank you for such a great deal. I don't need to tell all of these fantastically entrepreneurial people about return on investment for a free event that gets you $10,000 worth of credits. That's a pretty decent ROI uh, in anyone's book. Um, but uh, thank you so much to the Freshworks team for providing that to everybody here today. Um, Ravi, if you want to grab a seat on one of the tables, um, then of course, anybody can go and uh, join you and ask you any questions. Um, pick a color, any color, and, uh, and then we'll get on with the conversation with Elliot. Um, so Elliot, welcome. Um, uh, and, and obviously you've had a, a massively busy day. It's been a very busy couple of weeks for you for obvious reasons, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but um, ha- how are you um, and, uh, and where are you at the moment? Thank you, Ash. I was wondering whether I should sit next closer to you, kind of budge up. Um, I, no, we'll stay here. Very okay oh, for now. Intention. Sometimes it's a bit too close, sometimes it's a bit too far yeah, away. I like yeah. to feel a little bit Graham Norton Letterman. So, uh, yeah. yeah, if you want to okay. keep some Work space. Work the room, actually. Absolutely. No. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very, I'm very, sorry. This is good fun. Uh, <laughs> I really, really well. Thank you. Um, but so, so, so tired. Like, today has just been just one of those days. And my goodness me. But I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, man. Um, moments of, of pure joy in between some tricky navigating uh yeah i'm good but in the physical world i'm in bristol um uh well normally but at my in-laws and if you want to get all into the details um in my where my daughter sleeps uh where like she's currently ill at the moment so i've been in her tiny bedroom um for a little while so it's a bit strange arrangement i'm happy that this is a virtual event and you don't get to see the kind of like the cuddly toys in the backdrop but i'm good thank you ash thank you for having me by the way i am sorry to hear she's ill um and we'll get you back to her as soon as as soon as we can um i know Ruth, she's probably well playing a big part in keeping her keeping her healthy and happy um and thank you for for carving out the time um and obviously what is not only a busy family time but also a busy business time um I should say, though, while we're just here, um, and just before I kick off into a barrage of questions, um, that you guys can share this. Um, so if you enjoy the event, um, hopefully you do. Even if you don't enjoy it, you know, share it anyway, why not? Um, but we've got, um, we're all on social, of course we are. We're all millennials, why wouldn't, uh, why wouldn't we be? Um, the, the channel that you need to find us on is Instagram and LinkedIn primarily. Uh, we are on Facebook. But that's under our old brand name because Facebook won't let us change it because they're crazy. Uh, if anybody has any Facebook friends, holler because uh, I'd love to chat to them. But um, but Twitter and LinkedIn, you can find us at Think Different. Uh, share uh, your views from the event. You can actually snap some photos of the event and those will go in the main feed too. Um, back to you though, uh, Elliot. Um, ecology, talk to me. I'm fascinated by origin stories. I'm a big comic book geek. I love to know where people started. Pre-ecology... Who was Elliot? What were you doing? And then how did you get to the idea that is now ecology? Alrighty. Well, um, how about we start? So my background is is tech. So I've been a computer nerd for a very long time. And I just went through uni and did like, um, you know, started making websites and apps. And, um, you know, was in London for about 10 odd years. And I was working for an independent media publisher, and my salaries were my salary was was fueled by the ad revenue that was going through our kind of kind of publishing pages, and I was very much in the kind of the commercial system there, and you know it's very similar projects rolling over and over, um, but I've always for even longer than being into tech, I have just been like a just a real understander i guess of the environmental issues that we have um what i mean is kind of i was not always out on the streets marching um i was just probably often just sat in a in a chair going oh man this isn't looking pretty and um as the years wore on it you know well we're here aren't we um yeah so i it was just as i moved um to bristol just looking for a little mini change and um at the time i was doing my london commute and i was uh my i got a real penchant for a fancy coffee and a uh, a croissant uh on my way in and 
I just I just thought, what could <laughs> instead of just buying innumerable numbers of coffees a, a week, um, what good could that one coffee and a, and a pastry do per week? And if I just put that money into climate action, and um, the idea started to percolate there, I knew I was onto something when um, I went to a, a wedding, and it was around. Uh, I don't know. At the point, I'd been mulling the idea over for a, a couple of days. And I was on the dance floor at a wedding around uh, 10, 11, 12 p.m. And I was just shouting to my friend right next to me in his ear as loudly as possibly as possible about this thing I've been thinking about where you can just literally put your pocket change into climate action. And he was getting quite excited, but it was hard to tell, you know, what the... Uh, you know, like weddings are always great fun and people are in a good mood and very agreeable. But I knew something was something was happening because the morning after and presumably uh, like a fragile state, uh, he gave me a WhatsApp message and he said, you know, how can I get involved? And for me, that was, you know, the opener of, of this project. Absolutely love that. So fast forward to the point where you know, full disclosure, I've been lucky enough to have seen this journey from nearly the start. Um, and I remember a fateful day of uh, us meeting in the engine shed, I think it was, just in Bristol next to Temple Meads, probably post coffee and croissant at Hearts, if I'm going to make an assumption about where you might have been before. Um, and, uh, and walking in and saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about planting trees by subscription, helping the average Joe to have an impact on the planet uh, in a beautiful way um, is fairly uh, fair to say, I think, now looking at the platform. Um, how do you go from that conversation in your friend's ear um, to, to starting that business? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it seems more, it seems quite unlikely now, but a few years ago when we were talking, when you and I were having that as an initial discussion, so just over two years ago, um, you know, there, there weren't the apps to, to fund climate action and to offset your footprint and, and grow, a, grow a forest. Although that last bit was, was out a little bit, um, and it still is. But, you know, the, on page one of Google, if you search for, you know, offset my footprint or fund climate action, there'd be this just horrible web form uh, where you'd have to put in how many thousands of pounds of CO2 your family gets through a year or how many thousands of pounds of methane that your household goes through and you know it, it really wasn't done back then um and so you know it was in a very different kind of environment and that little chat we had ash was um it doesn't take me, me much to get me just very excited indeed and uh there's a certain infectious enthusiasm that i saw in your eyes when we said maybe we, this is more than a side hustle and maybe we should just get that going Yes, yeah, so um, it was a very really exciting time, but um, it was just an unbelievably trepidous uh, time for us too, where, you know, you know, my daughter, she's four-ish now, but she was about a year and a half old and a mega handful. And um, I'd kind of negotiated with my previous boss just like two or three hours off a week so that me and my partner, uh, my wife, we could just go and go, I don't know, rock climbing or mountain biking or whatever. And on that very first kind of few hours off in that week, um, we just kind of mulled around the idea. And then just like, it's hilariously too too sad to be like true to thought, but we ended up with two roles, you know, full-timer and a parent, which was given us jip at the time. And um, and then this whole kind of project on top of it. But we we just had to get going with it in the, way, in the only way that we know we could just by kind of squirreling away those few precious half hours and then an hour here and there. And it just seemed so unlikely that it, that it would turn out. But I think that's like a, a real nice thing to kind of, for anyone else who thinks about, you know, but I don't have time and you can find time squirreled away in the corners of, uh, you know, down the back of the sofa or whatever. Um, but my God, there were, there were some tears. Um, but, uh, you know, over the few months since we launched, it just... Uh, it's just been a real joy to have people who just um, just share the kind of passion and the journey that you're on, and um, you just you just start collecting people basically if you know if, if they want to come on board. I love that, and that speaks to the power of a business that's powered by 
purpose, which I'll get into shortly, but you, um, and I appreciate your transparency on this, mentioned, you know, starting a business with a young family and and that that is a big leap, right? It's a big leap for anybody. You know, starting any business at any time is, is, a, is a scary notion. Um, it's a very expensive activity often. It doesn't have to be, but to those who haven't done it before, it's, it's often a trap that we fall into. And I say expensive because I mean that from a capital point of view and a time point of view. We're learning a lot. It's one of the biggest learning curves we'll have aside from potentially parenting. Um, although you might be able to speak to the, the, uh, the parallels between the two. How how did that go? I mean, you mentioned a couple of tears there. Were there points where you were, you know, were you ever swayed on your vision of this is the company that's just going to exist? And did you think it would end up where you're at right now, which I guess we'll get into shortly? It just didn't, it just, at the time, it didn't make any sense. And on reflection, it didn't make any sense that we would do this. Like, so I talk about my wife a bit here because she was our, she was my first co-founder and then um, we, we met a good friend who's our th- the third guy um, well the, the third person in our crew but for me and her it just didn't stack up at the time I mean like, there was there was no time um, and we just just needed to make it work and I you know I just knew that kind of nagging feeling that I didn't get from all my previous work um, you know you talk about the amount of time and money put into it I mean it's um it's absolutely brutal and like now since doing this i look at any business and i go like wow well done you um like it's just unbelievable what sort of kind of i know you know back my background is tech and we used to call it um feature screen uh, feature creep and just you go like oh maybe we'll start a new project and um go oh okay so there's a you know that gdpr thing and then you add in something else and then and it's just absolutely bonkers but there's fortunately there's every next step is always surmountable and um it just meant that it was one foot in front of the other and i was painting a bit of a of a picture here and you know to know me i'm a bit of an, an optimist generally but it was just absolutely nuts i just can't believe we we freaking followed through on this you know given that my background also, you know, I'd moved from London to Bristol in part because I kind of burnt out from when I was at this kind of media publisher. So back to back meetings and um, I, I felt like a changed man from that. And, you know, I needed a recuperation. And um, but what you, what you can get from a purpose kind of driven company is this kind of like, I don't know, it feels like a, a riptide beneath you. You know, you, go, you might just be floundering going, oh, my God, it's crazy. And then all the time there's this tide that's just kind of pushing you and you're just going with it ultimately. And if that's the, if that's the, that's the journey you want to be on, then, um, you know, it can, it can just totally take you there. Uh, yeah, for sure. So I love, I love the, uh, the slightly oxymoronic uh, approach there of, hey, you know, needed some respite from London and the, and the daily grind and, and, and potentially, you know, the, the, the damage to the mental well-being there. So, you know what we'll do to, to relax? We'll start a company. Um, that seems like quite a crazy thing to go and do, um, yeah. which I guess comes back to this uh, profit and purpose piece, um, which is that, you know, you mentioned a couple of things here. One around building a company whilst being able to go mountain biking and things like that um and collecting people which is probably far easier when you've got a very deep and clear purpose to what you're trying to build i.e a positive impact on the planet in a very apparent way um under again you know it goes like saying a beautiful brand which i know lucy is 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 headed up um and driven forwards um was this was this strategic um you know cat amongst the pigeons devil's advocate here um the 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 purpose driven part of the company seems like it's inherently part of the business itself. Did you ever want to do that at the sacrifice of profit? Did you ever want, have you, do you ever want to make money at the sacrifice of impact? How do you find that balance? And and I guess you know the company's not a charity. Um, it's a, a, a limited entity. I wonder if we can explore that and unpack it just just for a little moment. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's now basically my my only major role to get right is that balancing of proper, uh, profit and purpose. So there's real one clear thing that we're just trying to do. We know from the research that's out there, there's enough 
uh, climate solutions that if we funded them, that would add decades to our carbon budget. Um, but we also know that there's enough people in, and families and businesses out there that have that kind of pocket change um, in their own pockets to be able to you know, uh, contribute something small. But if, if we act as the bit in the middle and round it all up, all that pocket change up into something meaningful, then uh, we've got this kind of really rare opportunity of, of halting and even reversing the effects of climate change and uh, biodiversity loss. So that is, that's the only motivation that any of us started what we're, what we're doing. And um, so it makes sense. This is a non-profit, you know, which is as, as altruistic as it gets. Um, and certainly we knew that money was uh, never going to come around or even be a faint glimmer of as in like personal gain at all. And so it was a non-profit and charity. And then um, we started on our beta and then we realized that, you know, what we don't have with, with all the likes of climate change is time. And if you're a non-profit or a charity, then you have the ability to go through that kind of organic growth, you know, taking donations and, and then potentially really rolling the dice on grants and um, that sort of, you know, kind of tapping into that money. But there's a lot of paperwork involved with that sort of thing. Um, and also, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are also vying for the same grant, that sort of thing. What we were, and initially the idea kind of started kicking around that we wanted to become the Spotify of sustainability because they're a great, you know, subscription service and the letter begins with, you know, S and that's also uh, sustainability. It's alliterated a little bit, but, you know, others, uh, Netf uh, you know, kind of Netflix and that are kind of out there too. But, you know, how did Spotify kind of, you know, land on our, I don't know, you know, on our desktop or on our phones? within just seemingly within a year potentially and it's because they are venture backed and you have very very deep pocketed you know finance options that are out there that are just op operate on a completely different level to um so anything they can even fathom you know to, you know financing rounds of hundreds of millions of dollars is is you know or even in the billions and actually you know that that well that's the sort of stuff we wanted access to and to get that it is um you have to be a self-sustaining profitable business to get there and so all of a sudden there was an interesting tightrope we found ourselves on you got us on the team saying doing it for the planet altruistic and then you look at our company papers and you know we're legally formed as a as a for-profit and so for the last two years I, i've been doing everything i possibly can to kind of put us in the camp of, or as, well, I don't know, rubbing shoulders of the camp of non-profit as much as possible. And there's lots of interesting devices that I've been getting involved with uh, since. So this is what I love the most, uh, I think, or at least one of the things I love the most about uh, ecology. So full disclosure for everyone here, I'm, I'm lucky to um, have a, a tiny part um, uh, in, in the company's journey here as a shareholder. And, and it's and it's been fantastic uh, seeing the journey from where you are to where you've come from to where you are now has been nothing short of amazing you know i get to see this vicariously through our community on an ongoing basis and every now and again there's a company that just blows my mind and continues to do so and uh, and ecology is definitely one of them and one of the things that i love is is that ability to seemingly effortlessly and i know it's not without effort because you you practice this all day every day balance the that profit and purpose um, and attract incredible people because of the purpose you have and potentially deliver dare i say uh, as much if not hopefully more impact than many charities um, because there's less paperwork to do potentially on the charitable side and and just more action to take because you have the flexibility to do so and of course the ability to access the finance um, uh, to enable that greater impact um, but just wanted to get back to basics for a moment because I realized you know we're in a room full of people that have probably read the bio and they've seen a couple of things and judging by the chat a number of them are already on their ecology journey um, you know planting trees and carbon offsetting uh, as part of the subscription but it would be good to know what ecology does right now if there's anything we don't really know about in the public domain and and if there's um, you know greater vision ahead um, and then we can get to how you're going to get to that and talk about the funding round recently uh, next cool uh <laughs> you know, i actually just was surprised to see there's loads of chat going on uh that was directed to me wasn't it i was i was wondering if you were asking everyone knows uh what ecology is let me introduce that 
Um, so it's, it's very simple for an individual uh, all the way up to business. And um, we just wanted to something that was just absolutely effortless that you could do from your sofa, bed or whatever, whatever, whatever position you find yourself in. You should be, have the ability to, you know, turbocharging your own contribution to the environment and, you know, in a positive way. And um, so, on, you know, I started as my own customer, really. My own journey as a, you know, just like an ethical, con you know, con conscious person was, you know, going for plastic-free alternatives, doing like loads of like low-carbon lifestyle stuff. And But that you realise that that gets to a bit of a wall quite quickly. And then you go, then what? You know, then what can I do? And um, it seems so crazy that my entire contribution so far had been about limiting my own damage on the planet. Whereas what what happens if I just try and actively repair the planet uh, directly? And so, you know, that started the idea of just funding projects that are, that are going to do, you know, and deliver that. And so um, the, the original idea and what it is right now is a subscription service where for about, I don't know, four to five pounds, you know, uh, maybe five pounds in the UK or in like ten dollars in the US, that sort of thing, because I've got bigger footprints, you can just get started, uh, choose which kind of lifestyle category you're in. If you're like a high consumer and, you know, you know you need to do more, then uh, we welcome you to pay a lot more to kind of kickstart your environmental and ethical journey into consciousness. So what does that actually mean? You get to um, compensate your entire carbon footprint through highly certified um, climate projects. And these are like renewable energy projects that are happening all around the planet, um, lovely humanitarian projects which affect, you know, livelihoods in developing worlds, um, you know, for example, repairing water boreholes is a project we, we funded recently. And um, when you repair these water boreholes, then local communities have access to clean water, which is amazing. But the indirect um, action of doing so means there's a whole lot less deforestation to a burning, you know, for creating charcoals and, and burning wood. Um, so we get behind two projects each month, um, as well as our kind of backbone is funding between 12 to 48 trees every single month in your own forest that you're actually starting to grow. So when you sign up, you'll see your own kind of impact coming to life. And um, we're on the kind of cusp of uh, launching V2 of that, which is uh, which we're all pretty darn excited about. Yeah, so this is um, the bit I think makes ecology so sticky. Um, it's that, you know, we are, because I was there near the start, we're the fifth founding business um, on the platform. Um, and if anybody wants a, hopefully a good example, a reasonable example of a company that's uh, delivering purpose in partnership with Ecology, then uh, they can check out the different um, profile, which you can find at ecology.com forward slash different, D-F-F-R-N-T. Um, and you can see there that we've been, you know, planting trees for 24 months and supporting social projects and impact projects for uh, two years now. Um, and as a result, we've, re we've reduced 68 tons of carbon um, which, of course, I can then kind of click and find out uh, what that's worth in, in flights and so on. And I mean, I don't take any international flights generally anyway. I'm a startup founder. God knows we can't justify that much. Um, but um, it's great to know that I'm kind of ahead of my own curve. And I think the thing that's important to say here, because I, I know it's like a common, I don't say misconception, but it's a, a common naysay, I think, for uh, the work that the likes of companies like you do is that people think about this as you know enabling people to do more bad uh, and then just pay for it at the back end and it's really not about that for me certainly and I think it's I think I echo everybody else's thoughts when I say this is that my subscription in 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 ecology has made me think more about the other areas of my life as well it's not like I can just go and drive more because I know I'm planting trees reason I'm helping social projects and impact it's that I actually drive less because that ecology profile was almost my gateway drug to sustainability um, so it's been uh, it's been a fantastic experience to to get started that way um, I just, but I, you, I just you're, you're yeah. right with with that I mean the kind of the hesitancy that I think that you had about like should I feel like an element of guilt about what I am doing with my own business or in, in, as an individual, like, 
that that guilt is wrapped with, with everyone and, and the kind of there's this horrible perfectionism that unfortunately dogs kind of or plagues i guess you know everyone out there you know first of all trying not to get it wrong um is the kind of the first part of like, oh geez you know i read one article that says do this and another article that says don't do that and it's you know it's that sort of kind of collective attitude that we all feel um that is ultimately going to really hamstrung us in in the future and so first of all we're just going to have to get comfortable with with progress is good not aside from you know perfection is going to be the thing that stalls us and we're not going to be able to move fast enough so i'm totally there with you the kind of like you know because i was also feeling a little guilty should i do this if i'm also doing that you know i talked about my love affair with croissants you know a little earlier and you know how does that sit in you know i've become a little bit more um uh you know plant-based these days but you know we shouldn't we shouldn't kind of uh shout down anyone who's kind of making that little mini journey and then as you say when you do a few steps then um you know in the right direction then it feels feels great and then it's a bit of inertia there and we found that with a lot of businesses that get on board with what we do they might have just you know just funded a hundred trees or they you know plant a tree for every pot of they sell but then they go like actually i want to calculate my entire business's carbon footprint or you know i also want to um join the million tree pledge or whatever that we're that we're doing and you know kind of this this just breeds progress and you know we should always be supportive of anyone who's kind of inkling in that direction anyway yeah um, one little no I, I think the yeah. the analogy that uh, i use and it's a very a very adjacent one but um but hopefully uh, one that's relevant here is it's almost like seeing the uh in, like very overweight person at the gym some people might look at that person and scoff and i think that person's that person's at the gym they're on the treadmill they've started it doesn't matter about where they're at in that journey but they're making an effort and they're doing something about it and that should never be scoffed at it should always be celebrated so whether it's one tree or as you've seen recently i i, I hear a couple of people planting ten thousand trees in one go um it's uh if not more um it's uh it's something um and if we're a collective part of something then something great can happen and of course you know you've got that that billion trees to go ahead and uh, and now and now plant in the future, but that's a that's a lot of work, and it's going to take you know a big team, arguably an army of people to get there, which which costs money, um, and you know I'm really humbled that this is I think the first uh, I would say in person, but it's I guess a virtual version of in person interview that you've given since. Uh, your recent announcement of fundraising. So, um, yeah, uh, four million pounds from uh, in a round led by General Catalyst, who are a very reputable and, and, and essentially famous fund, as it were. Tell us more about that. That's that's a, a ginormous amount of money from the two years ago when you know you were just taking a couple of hours out a week to work on this. How do you go from there to now? Like the business has come on so fast. The monthly recurring revenue is huge. You planted a lot of trees. What talk us through that journey so far, as brief it may, as it may be? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, a learning, 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 learning process. Like I just not exposed to any of this before, and you know, not expecting to, you know, not pretending anything otherwise. And um, it's been interesting. Yeah. So you know, we had been like a volunteer team, like and just like a, a group of people just hammering away and doing this, and then you know for. For, for a good year it was either no money or about 700 pounds a month each and it was just you know down to the bare metal and um yeah and then and then today uh well you know bringing on uh, like a, an incredible investor that was responsible for Deliveroo and Monzo and um uh, you know Airbnb and stuff it's freaking awesome um but I, I sort of felt like I had some really I had some really fantastic kind of uh, early conversations with investors and um, I had, you know, I, I knew enough to know that it, it's a slog and I thought, I don't know what, I have a feeling like we're just going to kind of like just rock up and then take their money and, you know, we'll be on to the next bit. But it just, you just go through the process like, like anyone does and dear God, uh, absolutely nuts. I mean, how anyone manages to achieve this and not to kind of blow our own trumpet, but having seen it firsthand, 
It's just mad. Um, also, I, th I think kind of our investors are quite late stage investors and they're expecting, uh, you know, that there's this kind of infamous due diligence phase right at the end. And um, that was actually 80% of the work. And there's none of it's them. It's, it's all it's all you and going like, what's your policy on? OK, right. No, you don't, don't have that. Um, it was just unbelievable. Uh, but it's about people and connection and just staying to, true to who you are and not just giving them BS because, you know, they're very astute people often who have gone through this themselves and have a lot of um, little detectors, BS detectors about, you know, what you're on about. Um, and you can very, you very quickly gravitate to those who, um, for me, it was those who asked the kind of very different questions, you know, a lot of investors, extremely numbers based, which is, I, I really get, you know, there's a lot of cash involved there. Um, but there's uh, every now and again just some investors who come along and the kind of line of questioning was that you just got that you just knew that they got it and they knew what the kind of the challenge at, ha at hand was and when it came to general catalyst um, you know the kind of questioning was was all about how we balance profit and purpose you know uh, which is massively close to my heart you know they're talking about kind of the end game where it's going to be really difficult, that kind of narrative, when, you know, let's say a few years down the line and, and things are, you know, a lot, lot bigger, I hope. And, you know, it's all very well for me rocking up and, you know, talking to a group of people like this every now and again and saying, look, I'm just this kind of down, to, down to earth guy who's just really worried about the future. But soon like, it's going to be really hard to kind of have the kind of the human element behind things. And, um, yeah, general cast this, they just... They kind of got that that was so important, like almost kind of the aim of the game, really, for what we were needing to achieve. Um, they knew that uh, like crowdfunds are going to be a big part of what we need to do. That you know, community the community has to ultimately own ecology or be a big part of it. Um, they got the fact that we always you know we need to take transparency to the nth degree. You know, there's a lot of plagiarism in the kind of this you know kind of the techie world where. Um, you know, your ideas can be borrowed very quickly. Well, just imagine that, plus actually showing everyone in the world, all your suppliers, supply chain, receipts, um, just absolutely everything. And so, you know, we show our hand, which was, you know, has meant that there's been a lot of um, other kind of ecology types. You know, Ashen, you're the first to actually show me the kind of the proliferation of the ones that you come across as a, you know, kind of part-time investor. And, uh, you know, that, that's all out there. But General Catalyst, they knew they knew we'd have to kind of do everything in the open and, and be also just a little bit vulnerable as well and just say that we, ha we don't know all the answers today and um, kind of come join us because we are going to get things wrong and, you know, just shout at us when, you know, something looks a bit off. And, you know, that's our opportunity to take on board and kind of work with it and, I think really that's going to be our shtick, you know, from now until the end of time, wherever that bitter ending will be, um, you know, that's going to be our kind of defining thing is to just be the kind of kind of the rare glimmer of humanism in, you know, what otherwise can be like a very kind of cutthroat uh, business world. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, one, it's very enabling um, and encouraging to hear that you know, some of the most well-known investors in the world are, are more human um, than those who aren't. And maybe that's a key differentiator as to, as to why they've been so successful. Um, and fantastic for you to, of course, have them on board um, amongst the portfolio of, you know, household names. Um, but yeah, the, the ability to jump on your website, click a few buttons and end up at your public dashboard of customers, you know, how your revenue is growing that day, um, that hour even, and seeing who's cancelled and what the churn's like. Luckily and obviously, the numbers are very outweighed in the positive, which is fantastic to see. Um, and obviously why you've attracted such great conversations. But yeah, just I guess on a, on a short note, um, curious as to if you think that was a key, a key piece of help for you. Um, that, that building in public cult that's happening at the moment, do you think that was helpful because it meant that the due diligence was less so when you had those conversations with the investors? It was less, less smoke and mirrors because it was just like, hey, just go and look at our website. Everything's there. Mm, yeah, absolutely. 
I wouldn't, you know, if I saw it all over again, I'd, I'd do the, the same sort of transparency thing. Um, even for, even if I was to look at doing like a not like a non-purpose driven company, um, there's something just so uh, relaxing, no, not relaxing, but just kind of reassuring about when you're getting behind the company and buying a product from them, being able to just see as much as, as much as possible. Um, and, you know, if you look at our Trustpilot reviews, you know, I think every other review mentions our kind of openness and trustworthiness and you know that is a major bat it would otherwise be a major barrier for someone to kind of you know essentially give take care of their money to funding it putting it into climate action which is is a real big ask yeah so it's it's been mega helpful and i think in, in any business can genuinely benefit from it and the earlier you do it the easier it's going to get because there's been no end of because we publish all our board meeting uh, minutes and everything um you know you you kind of head things off in the past of just going like what would everyone say if we literally even cross that bridge and that's like you know, that's a big fat nope and get to move on and you know it's easier to be op- in the open from the beginning um but uh, i really recommend it uh it's you know and you realize quite quickly how how rare this sort of thing is that you know, you don't see it uh, elsewhere, and but thinking about taking it even further now, and um, you know, I'm I'm not a gamer or like I don't really uh, dive into many other people's live streams, like you know, on Twitch or whatever. Um, but we're thinking about maybe just having just like literally a live transmission, a live stream of of us building ecology, and then anyone at any point can who's ever had a thought or just wants to see what we're up to. Um, in a in ideal world, there's a single video stream and there's a little bit of our forest in you know one you know or two so just see the rustling of the leaves i mean that is slow in terms of growth don't expect to see much from day to day um but you're seeing that they're there uh like a little webcam over the kind of the, the team in the office when we get back together and then maybe just someone i don't know uh writing some lines of code or whatever um and then just like a little live chat and just to be kind of like the ultimate approachable company because trust is you know kind of our main Barrier, well, kind of the industry's main barrier to entry. So we're going to see if we can keep on turning up a level. I'm really excited about that trend. I'm very excited about that video feed. I've had semblances of the similar thoughts, but I'm not sure people want to see me in my apartment eating cake half the day in between emails, to be honest. So, um, That's yeah. Surreal. That's real, actually. <laughs> And if, you know, your trees versus my, my house plants, there's no comparison really. I can't keep a peace lily alive. Yet you guys have planted something like 16 million trees in two years, which is insane. So this is one fact that I love, by the way, and this isn't to naysay anybody. Again, love that people are doing something. And I know you guys are fans of Ecosia, but I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, it took Ecosia seven years to plant a million trees and you guys did it in your first year, which... I think one says a lot about the company first and foremost, and I'm sure you won't mind me saying it says a lot about the way the world is, um, dare I say, is probably the wrong term to use. I was going to say warming up uh, to the idea of sustainability. Uh, probably not the right word, but you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah, we're at, we're at 16 million trees and growing. Um, again, excuse the pun, you know, 350k MRR, I think you said, blended MRR, monthly recurring revenue for anybody in the audience who... Um, who's not okay with the SaaS jargon here. Um, that's a lot of money to get to from nothing to, to 350K within around two years on a monthly basis. And now there's four million pounds in from, from investors, including General Cat- Catalyst. Where do you go from here? You've built a remarkable team so far. What's next? And what are the challenges you foresee going forward? Uh, yeah, good one. So uh, it it is like it's a different type of, of hard now so I think you know for the last six months I've been in kind of an investment world and it is kind of absolutely shocking really that it, it such a thing can take so long um but you know a lot changes in those in those few months and now it's just like oh man we haven't really checked in with the last you know however many you know load of customers and you know what they need from us and you know the kind of dynamic has totally changed and um for example you know paid media so like ads on facebook and instagram uh that's just got a lot harder uh you know since like ios 14 kind of latest, latest, latest version of ios came out really hard to track um people uh for you know for the right reasons or, or whatever but 
you know, kind of, okay, yeah, well, you know, that was a really handy way of just immediately growing wherever we pointed to. Um, and, you, kind of, you know, you kind of you have to do reset every now and again. And so, you know, like you're saying with Ecosia, who I think it was like that, I think them seven, took them seven years to plant, I think about like five or seven million trees. And by the way, like I, I just, they are our ultimate heroes and we model a lot in our, you know, in the kind of, uh, in the sh- in the shadow of, of where they're you know really trailblazing absolutely love those guys but um you know next step is uh just just leveling up everything so now we've got 16 million trees to our, our name um we can't go long periods of time now without saying we've visited all our trees to see how they're getting on and you know all sorts of new projects that we're getting behind and so we're kind of concocting all sorts of um uh kind of project specific trees to uh <laughs> trees teams to go visit our um you know our impact all over the world and it's just um just another level of uh or it's like it's completely fresh challenge to how it was when we got going and when we got going you just you just ha- all you can really hang off is just building the product for yourself and and your, your bodies around you and um you know and you and, and with that you don't it's, it's interesting, you, you also think that your buddies are going to be, you go like, okay, how many buddies do you think I could sign up to this thing I'm about to launch? And you, you think 50 and then it's five. It's like, okay, all right, so this is how it, this is how it is then. And, um, you know, you get, you get clever, you get strategic and, you know, and then, then comes the graft really. But it's absolutely bonkers. And when you're kind of working to kind of the capital of trees rather than um, money, it's that kind of gives you kind of like a little cheeky angle and a little cheeky confidence to kind of you know to to push things and when you're talking to businesses you can you can throw down the the, the planet freaking on fire card and you know if someone says to me oh I'll book you in for you know mid August I'm like the planet it will have warmed you know by point zero five degrees potentially by then you know do you really want to freaking do that and so you kind of um, it was kind of an interesting phase of uh, using what we had to our advantage and uh, again, a little inertia in the early days. That's um, quite alarming, scary, but um, but definitely encourages action immediately. <laughs> and that's one thing that I'm loving seeing from, you know, one, uh, the eternal uh, ecology slack um, is that there are ongoing conversations about product development and improvements on a on a constant basis it's the most active team that i've ever been passively part of and, and seen and it's amazing to see how you guys interact with each other regardless of how many of you are in the ecology army now two i'm going to for better or worse pretend that i came up with the idea of calling groups of teams in ecology dreams uh, just like monzo have their monzo noughts um that way if everyone thinks it's rubbish they can blame me rather than you and you don't get any uh, any blame for it um, it's, but pretty, it's pretty much. good um, but it's not, I'm not all there with it. Uh, <laughs> dreams. I, yeah, I get, I get cool. Yeah. I love that. Um, and then I guess, you know, that leads into what was going to be my final question. And before we open to a question from the audience, really, and it's quite an open ended one, which is that what I love seeing now with that product development I get to see from, from inside the Slack is that, you know, there's constant development to help companies do more on their own impact. You know, the, the uh, ecology ability to, uh, connect to via Zapier now means that I, as a company, can plant a tree for every paid member that joins and stays every single month, meaning that the different forest is growing on itself kind of um, exponentially the more that we add more members, and that's going to continue to grow, which is amazing. Um, every time Stripe processes a payment, we plant a tree, and, and away we go. That's awesome. You're doing things with Shopify where you can, of course, you know, offset um, the carbon footprint of purchases as you buy something and that's happening across so many different platforms um you know are, are there more things to come like that are you uh, are there things that we should be looking one out for from ecology but what do you think small businesses and large alike in the room could and should be doing to leverage this sustainability approach for, for the world both for business growth but also for humanity as a whole i guess yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the the last thing that's really rubbish at the moment, especially if you're a business owner, is, is trying to understand what your actual carbon footprint is. And um, you, 
I don't know, probably people in this room will have kind of Googled, you know, how do I calculate this? And, you know, it can be incredibly expensive. And so we want to kind of take our ecology approach to kind of to keeping it as cheap as humanly possible um, and for the planet benefit, essentially. And so we're working on a uh, what's called Ecology Net Zero, where you can essentially understand your entire business carbon footprint in real time. And um, I've seen it in front of my own eyes and it's pretty eerie seeing your footprint increase like during the day as um, and things as things happen. And that's through integrating um, your kind of accounting or financial financial software. It's really, really neat. And so we're looking for people to join our um, kind of beta waiting list at the moment, which is cool. Um, but you know that that's our kind of next big step because at the moment I think that we can you know quite easily fund good climate action. Um, we're going to be launching like a little shop front for all of our projects essentially. So if you if it takes your fun takes your fancy that you're really passionate about, um, let's say you're in Australia and you're really passionate about uh, you know restoring wildfire stricken areas, then you can just get behind those projects essentially. So a little shop and a uh, tool for calculating your business's emissions too. Love that. And of course, the extra piece in, in there is that some people I've seen have, have gone to the extreme. I know Phil is is very much the uh, extremist um, in in the midst from a, from, a, from a sustainability point of view in traveling around the country, if not the world, um, and planting almost single-handedly, I think it was like over 100,000 trees now, Phil Broad. Um, uh, but uh, and and also, I'm going to claim the term ex tree mist as well. By the way, just because if there's not okay, enough that's data, good. Um, that that's I, I think one. that's pretty cool. Yeah, pass it on to PR. Um, <laughs> um, but I've been seeing people getting paid in trees. You know, for these odd jobs that you know you're running a freelance agency or a company, and a client says, "Hey, can you just do this for me?" And it feels a bit hard sometimes to say, "Well, yeah, just pay my hourly rate, and that would be nice." Um, it, it, I've seen a couple of times people kind of offsetting that um, that ask with with hey just plant a couple of trees and and, and we're good and uh, I'm just loving seeing the activity that people are thinking about the planet not only their pockets so clearly lots that we can do in the short term we can obviously all join up to uh, ecology and and do good for the planet and a lot of social projects too um, if people go via our profile at ecology.com forward slash different cheap plug um we get some shiny trees which would be great um and, and a better impact on the planet but net zero sounds incredibly exciting i don't think you've spoken about that much publicly anywhere else yet so thank you very much for uh, for bringing it uh, to the audience here um and uh, and thank you so much for your time uh, we are going to go to audience question um but Actually, first and foremost, before we do go to audience questions, I just want to say a huge thank you to you, Elliot, for, for spending the time today and uh, and get everybody to explore the Room Key app a little bit more with a round of applause uh, and, and join me in thanking you. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's been awesome to probably chat through. Love that. So thank you everyone uh, for, for, for engaging in that. Super helpful. Helpful for the screenshots as well, which is great. Um, so yeah, the question uh, that Anne had, and I'm very happy to pass you the mic if you want to ask this question. You can just raise your hand. So you raise hand as an emote, you can do that. Um, if you pop, pop that on there, then I will come to you and ask that question. Otherwise, I'll just ask it for you. Uh, I can do that then, that's fine. Um, so Anne's question was, She wanted to know about how you got your first customers. You know, we go from no customers to get into the point where you can pay yourselves, as you said, about seven hundred pounds a month each. Not much, not, not barely anything to, to to get by on, especially with a young family. To the point where we're doing, you know, over three hundred and fifty thousand pounds in monthly revenue. That's that's quite a hike. How did you get your first customers? How did you grow those? And how did you get to where you're at? And, and did that strategy change? Or have you just been rinse and repeating the same thing that works over and over again? Is there a secret source we're all missing here? Good one. Good one. Um, I think there's not one kind of, uh, like, one single hack. Like, I, you know, if you think of Dropboxes, you know, you, if you refer a friend, then you get 200 megabytes added to your own storage. I mean, 
that was freaking genius because I used it. I was like, um, and immediately benefited from it. We we need you know, to be honest. We need that sort of thing, um, like ultimately. But where where it started was um, just really kind of tapping into something that was that just had that that kind of need. You know, people are feeling are are feeling helpless, and you know, if you can really offer them something that kind of puts them at ease and I think someone on one of the reviews said that they can they can genuinely sleep better at night. You know, that that kind of like core kind of like deep uh emotional kind of need like is presumably how it's how just that just that bit that allows someone to talk to someone else about this thing and then they talk to the other but i think it's got to be the initially thing is just thinking about where are your super fans and just making time for them so speak to people who have been kind of outwardly vocal about what you've been doing um, it's not really influencer stuff, but kind of, you know, knowing what they need from you. So you mentioned Phil, for example, who cycling around um, Europe uh, just for the love of it. And then seeing all the kind of wildfire st- stricken or kind of desert and deforested areas. It's like, I just realized that this is such a massive problem and then decided then just to go and want to plant some trees. And he'd been already a, like a subscriber with us. And he just said, oh, man, it'd be really brilliant if you could uh, just um, have like a little pop up on my on my forest and then allow people to you know put trees in my forest or I can put trees in theirs. And that was just from having that kind of dialogue with someone. And, you know, when we talk about the 16 million trees, probably 13 million came from these kind of like little one off kind of like, oh, we're going to gift you this tree or maybe a business puts in like 100,000 trees or whatnot so it's just um for, for me the big one is is those super fans and just talking to them loving them and then seeing where they take you i can't speak more to that really um the the example and and the I, i've seen it kind of it's kind of firsthand from your community without you knowing so i've i've sat at a dinner table with friends of mine who have both been competing, I think this is another tactic that maybe you guys have, have employed, been competing over the number of trees they've planted, to the point where they've kind of said, don't tell my partner, but I planted more trees this month so that I could plant more than him. Um, and I just love that people are competing for, for planetary impact now. It's like such a great thing to be doing as opposed to, hey, I'm going to put 20 quid on, on you know the football just to see who wins. I'm just going to plant 20 quid's worth of trees and uh, have a greater impact on the planet just so I can one up my friend. And I think that's uh, that's been really interesting to see. Um, and it's because I think, you know, that super fan piece, I was just in there early and I wouldn't stop talking about it to my friends. It, it's uh, it's so easy to describe. Um, and I think that's a, a, a key thing that, uh, that I see lots of startups gaining traction from is making something super easy to, subscri- uh, to describe to their friends um, and making it super lovable. And I think, it, again, it goes without saying that the, be- the beautiful nature of the brand is a key piece here. So many sustainability companies are boring um, and ecology certainly isn't. So it's easy to describe, it's beautiful um, and there's a competitive nature to it. That combination becomes really interesting and really powerful. And, and that's why you're at the point where you, that you're at. Um, I'm going to come to Alex in a second. Alex, be ready with your question because I saw you put your hand up for, for a question there. But Reese has asked the question in the chat in the meantime, um, which is around your APIs um, and, uh, and, and plug-in ability to other platforms in his example, namely WordPress. Um, just wondered what other things that you guys plug into from a, a technical capacity and, and how, how Ecology can be used more technically. Nice. Yes. Well, welcome. Uh, yeah. Check out the API docs at the bottom of the, uh, on our footer. So yeah, we've, as Ash was saying, something like Zapier or Zapier, never, never sure which one, um, uh, does allow you to connect with, with anything. And I'd be really surprised if there wasn't a WordPress adapter for that too. Um, yeah, I, I really love the kind of like the, the kind of the wonderful combinations that people, uh, and businesses bring to be able to make impact happen. Um, you know, for example, like, you know, for every, I don't know, there's there's this one where um, I think when, yeah, in the, it's, it's a ad company and internally in their own team, they've got this kind of uh, sales manager. And then when their sales hit like a certain 
number of for a certain person um it got there like a tree goes into their forest and um you know there's been there's like a no code implementation is, is really neat yeah so uh you plant trees uh you can fund certified carbon offsets which are um which you get the certificate at the end saying that um an amount of co2 has been offset um yeah and just get in contact if you figure out a way that we've we've not thought of because it'd be great to hear from you yeah, Dennis is running uh, regular webinars now as as a champion of the the ecology dream, as it were. Um, he's doing fantastic work, so uh, definitely join one of those if you have any questions. Um, Alex, I'm going to come to you with your question. It looks like um, on the question that I asked on behalf of Anne, um, there was a, an extension to that around paid advertising. I think you've used something quite novel there uh, in, as, as you've grown. So I'd love to come back to that in a second. But let's go to Alex for his question. Alex, I'm going to ask, uh, offer you the public mic. So you just need to accept that in a second uh, and then ask your question. You should have that now. Here you go. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. Hopefully, if uh, you might need to press to talk, if you're using desktop, it might be T. Um, and if you're on the app, you might just need to press to talk. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Go for it. Ask your question. Uh, to start, we're a huge ecology fans. Um, we've about five thousand trees in our in our forest, and um, we had a, we had a recent use case where we uh, incentivized customers to to leave a positive review. Um, in, in return, we plant, uh, planted a tree for every review that we got, or maybe five trees. We got uh, 30 positive reviews from that and a ton of trees planted, which was really good. Um, so, yes, it, we're using it as an incentive factor as well to be able to make good for the world. But onto my question is around the investment um, res that you've just done, Ash. No, sorry, thanks, Ash, for having me, Elliot. Um, what did that process look like? Like, how, how did you get in talks with general catalysts? How did you choose them? What did you prepare prior to reaching out to them? Like, can you walk us through the, the from idea of, of raising the investment to the point that it happened in a very loose way? Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so then, yeah, you know, it, it did start off going on to Y Combinator, um, you know, resources and, and get that seed deck template and, uh, and you know, and just start it there and just go and, you know, as much as joy or dismay that might feel, fill you with, it started there. And then it started in terms of the initial outreach was is really slow. And, um, you know, you don't want to go to your kind of 18 contacts until you have practiced everything over and over with, um, you know, with people who don't think are necessarily going to lead to something brilliant. But you know what? Um, it was to General Catalyst was through someone who I just would never have thought would have given me an introduction to to them. And I think it's always worth giving everyone the benefit of the doubt as well. Where, you know, speaking to like a very, very small family office, which is um, often kind of like a, a family that has had some funds in the past. And, you know, they tend to be a bit more benevolent. And so, um, but on quite small numbers and, you know, quite limited on their kind of network abilities, that sort of thing. But it's been, it's been befriending some there who introduced me to a friend out in uh, San Francisco and then they knew, um, they, they, you know, they just kind of fell in love with the mission that we had too. Um, I think there's like a, a, a bit of feedback that I've never kind of confessed myself, try to kind of humble, but, um, you know, but I think it is helpful is, being as just rounded as you possibly can be, you know, being yourself because they're looking to to see who they potentially are investing in. And the more of you that you give them and, you know, the kind of the Y Combinator template was the like to, for the deck was the was probably the one of the only bits of kind of formalities that were really borrowed from. The rest was, you know, what do we think is important to tell and that that story to kind of get out there, but uh, generally speaking, it was it was picking up opportunities that we just didn't think were going to get to that point. And you know, just like the rest of the world's uh, startups, you know, you do you do see a lot of no's, and you realise that um, 
that 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 is just like part and parcel of of what that kind of journey has to entail and you know it's only until the what they say yes is the one that ultimately was the kind of the right fit for for you and them to have this kind of budding relationship as we were kind of talking about earlier awesome work on the um five thousand trees and the and a really innovative um way of 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 building your forest through asking for reviews that is that is absolutely brilliant i've i've seen you incredible chaps kind of kicking around so it's awesome to chat to you actually uh yeah thanks alex and a fantastic question um coming back to Anne's question um and diving a little bit deeper into the uh, the question around paid advertising um just wondered if that's been part of your strategy um, I think I remember from possibly the first board meeting, there were uh, options that had opened up to you that I wasn't even aware were possible for startups. Don't know if you ended up taking them and, and if you can talk to those. But um, but yeah, just wondered if that's part of your strategy and, and if so, are you spending lots of money on it? Was it was it fairly passive, an experiment? Yeah, where are you at with, with paid? But yeah, a bit of a bit of a journey and it's really interesting paid advertising. It's a little bit like PR, like you can't always attribute the effect that someone had when they kind of scrolled past an advert and then, you know, told a friend about, oh, I've, I've seen Ecology around and maybe they convinced their boss into to signing up. So there's a slight kind of wild cardness to it. Um, but there is obviously the kind of the direct conversion stuff um, that you get to. And to a certain extent, you know, it's, it's changed. You know, before we were chasing kind of the direct conversions and then you realise this you've got to be got to you've got to go slower than that and um you know you just start to build up a bit of an idea of what your brand is in what's called upper funnel stuff so not asking them to sign up but asking them or to, but showing them the sorts of things that you're passionate and get behind and um you know you can tell there's an indirect kind of uplift of when we do like a, a big kind of upper funnel campaign that you know the month after is is better even though they looks like it came in through organic and so, you know, I do think there's a, there's a big part to play of that kind of, you know, just those little moments of seeing your, seeing your brand in different places. And, you know, with the hyper local targeting that you can do, it means that you could make all of Bristol, you know, that's where I am now, you know, all of Bristol aware of, you know, ecology on a, you know, a, a moderately small business, you know, like a small to medium sized budget. And, you know, that allows you to see, you know, what effect that has in, whether there's a reason there to kind of rolling it out. Um, another angle is, is something called a user acquisition loan. So it's a loan you take on for um, sim- simply to a, you know, simply to acquire new customers. Um, that's where for Google, it was uh, really handy for us initially because we didn't have any investment, but it meant we could kind of borrow against um, ad budgets essentially. And it was really interesting, but it was, it was a way that we kind of got going on, on trying our hand with ads. Um, and then finally, uh, there's no better way of testing your um, your kind of messaging than like in just giant amount of volumes of um, ads, which is so easy to spin up A/B tests. Don't know whether anyone else in the room here has ever tried to kind of set up their own business with different kind of ways of communicating yourself. It takes a lot of time. You have to contact developers maybe, and, or you know set things up. But with adverts, it means that you can say, you know, do people react well to this kind of like the earth is on fire or did they want to see kind of like a beautiful emerging kind of spring blooming of you know in a verdant background so yeah love love kind of like the, the trial and error with that i hope that answers your question and um we're going to round up the questions after this last one and uh hopefully elliot can stick around for officially the the half six finish but the room stays open so um maybe be able to ask the question uh in a second on one of the tables when we're done but the final question that i'll round up with here is one from uh giles um who kind of alludes to the um the balance of uh profit and purpose i think uh, continuing post investment and how uh whether the funding round is going to bring more of a question around the company value and its race to a potential exit perhaps um, into the foray a little bit more. Um, is that going to become more of a factor? Is that already pre-agreed? I'm assuming this was part of your uh, initial discussions with investors anyway to make sure they weren't going to be too aggressive on metrics that didn't 
matter to the planet and the company. But um, but yeah, I, I think that's what Giles is asking there. Giles, feel free to uh, nudge me a bit uh, in the right nudge us in the right direction in the chat if not. But yeah, are you are you concerned about the um, the potential distraction of, of of growth versus the impact as a result of the funding round potentially? Yeah, interesting one. Um, especially when you know, so purpose led. I think if you're a, a tech, you know, SaaS company like a software a surface company, um, then you're, you know, you you'd be on board with the investor when they're saying, you know, that looks like a great deal, and the investor knows when they see a great deal, and you know that was that's your kind of often your success uh, criteria, and you're probably going to go along with that. But you know what I know now about investors, even majority investments is uh, you still need a lot of um, buy-in from, from the board of directors. And um, it means that as founders, um, we would ensure that there, that our votes are, you know, outsize you know, the investor votes in terms of, it, especially when it comes into decisions like uh, selling the company. When it comes to selling a company, generally speaking, for like normal, uh, like, investment documents you do need a lot of consent to to kind of let that happen so you would only ever be and with with our own uh blessing really and it's the sort of stuff that you need to kind of talk to the would-be investor and have them write it down you know that in the future they are absolutely fine with us making a call on what an eventual acquisition would look like you know for for me it you see the rise and rise of microsoft in the sustainability space you know, if in five years time, Microsoft said, you know, I'd like to take what you're doing, uh, keep all you folks on, but have access to that sort of Microsoft style bank account, then there's a very obvious win there for the planet. And um, if we did it in a way that wasn't going to take us off any of our values and away from the kind of the roadmap and essentially our user needs, then that's what we would, that was what we would look at. And ultimately, we are going to fail very, very quickly. I don't know whether you've seen like companies like uh, Oatly when they took on investment um, from investors with kind of spurious backgrounds, and you know that's really damaging, and they're still licking their wounds today. Um, and that's the same. It's going to be the same with us in the future. And so, an investor can't ask us to do something that would ultimately negatively impact our own future. You know, if ultimately if our community isn't happy and they're at the heart of all of our decisions then we're never going to get to hundreds of millions of subscribers and you know so there's kind of helpfully you know we are in it for those reasons and elements of profiteering aren't going to uh aren't going to happen unless our community says that's the right level of you know uh way of handling the funds essentially so there's a kind of little safety mechanism brought in there and i hope too with larger and larger crowdfund rounds as well where you know our community becomes like a really massive voice in what we do fantastic answer to a to a really good solid question and uh and and a, and a fantastic roundup to what is I think been a fantastic uh, conversation. So again, thank you everyone uh, for joining. I'd love to uh, invite you for a round of applause for Elliot uh, and, and his time tonight. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Ash. And thank you everyone for uh, yeah checking, checking out the story. So love to hear from uh, any of you and everyone. So cool. What should I do now, Ash? Hang around? <laughs> now, if you want to pop onto one of the tables, I feel like the green one's probably most on brand for you. So if you want to click on one of those, head down there. Um, people can join you for a chat. Um, Elliot's going to be around there uh, having those conversations. Feel free to jump on and ask him questions. Before we round up, just want to say again, a really big thank you to the partners who make these events free um, and possible. Firstly, RoomKey, the platform that has hosted this, um, is amazing. You can use it for your own business. Um, if you have any questions, just ask and, uh, and I'll connect you to Don, the founder, or Aaron, um, who can help you out. Um, all of our general featured partners, uh, Atomic Smash, Bellow, DZ, FD Works, uh, Freshworks, and Rocket Makers for powering different itself, uh, which I'll get to in a second. And of course, uh, Freshworks for Startups for powering uh, this event specifically tonight. Um, and they're a fantastic deal for $10,000 worth of credits on their product. If you're running a company, it'll definitely be helpful for you. Do check that out. Um, and Ravi is on the green table to have that conversation with if you wish. 
Um, Different itself is a business. We're not just running free events. Um, we provide business benefits for creators. Building a company in a way that Elliot has built it um, and his team is not without its challenges, as I'm sure we've heard, and it's much easier to be done with a friend. So I've built Different as a friend with benefits for founders and creators um, who are building any business anywhere at any stage. Um, if you have any questions about that, you can ask me at any time, um, tweet us at Think Different um, or, or find us on Instagram. Um, our website's fairly easy to find too um, and you'll get an email about this afterwards, possibly tomorrow because we've got some dinner to go and eat in a second. Um, but these events happen generally every other week. Um, I would love to know who you would love us to interview. So tweet us the person that you would love me to interview the most and you'd love to hear the story from and I'll endeavor to try and get them on board. Um, you can come and watch them for free. And then, um, yeah, we'll see you hopefully at the next event uh, at Room Key um, in two weeks time. In the meantime, you know where to find us. I'll leave you to chat. Thank you so much for coming and we'll see you again soon. Hi. Hi.